Garou. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yet again, another interview from Hooverville. This time, one that I wasn't really involved in, and something I just felt I had to include on behalf of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. So, we, we better introduce ourselves for the sake of the audio, yeah? Um, we are Staggering Stories Podcast. Hello. I'm Jean. I'm Keith. I'm Adam. I'm Asda Man. And you are? And I'm Roy. <laughs> We're pleased to know you. Who know who you are? Yeah. <laughs> now, we're at a Doctor Who convention. Sad, sad people we are. <laughs> How have you enjoyed it today? Oh, it's been great. Smashing so far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a downside. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, at the moment we're just uh, doing the autographs and uh, a little bit of chat, photographs, and a bit more chat this afternoon, I believe. Do you do the American yeah. conventions? No, I don't. I but I'm always yet. available. Pluck, <laughs> <laughs> pluck. Are you listening, our friends in the USA? <laughs> no, no now, it's uh, a wee while since you've done Doctor Who. It is indeed. Would you be kind enough to tell our listeners about your time with the programme? Well, it was an incredible programme. Uh, I liked it from the start. Uh, the Caves of Androzani. Yes. Mm. And, uh, well, the, the first thing I liked about it was uh, the characters and the story was really hard-hitting and heavy. And, and uh, some of the Doctor Who stories before that one had an idea that slightly sort of wispy characters. And, and, and this one was really... Uh, down to earth and it had everything it had political intrigue it had the violence it had the monster it had the love aspect and the dear Nicola uh, with Sharon's Jack uh, and um, for me uh, working with Graham it was, it was always a place to work with Graham I've known him for a while and so it was great that. and I thought he, he directed it and did it really well Mm. And did you know that on the Doctor Who monthly poll, I think it's Kate and Andrew Zani come top? No, oh. best Doctor Who story ever. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. I, mean, I don't blow my head. I would. Of course it did. Oh God, if I'd have known that, I'd have asked for more money. Oh, yeah. 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 So, well, what were your feelings about? I mean. Did you get the impression that it was a, a good story at the time? And no, you were a dropping actor. And, and That's right. Yeah, no, but I, I did yeah, I feel this. And one wonderful guy, Morris, uh, of course, played the uh, Patriot in there. Uh, and it was lovely to be a mercenary. Because uh, I'd worked with the uh, British Army before on other shows yeah. and that. And uh, so I was used to the old khaki. But it was nice, uh, because, and there was a great freedom uh, in the performance playing. Um, that we could sort of bounce off each other, uh, as I say, as, as I knew uh, the, the army scenario, um, and I think that what created the, the sort of there was always an air of violence yeah. around it, uh, and of course one was fit in those days. I remember the time uh, towards the end we, had, we chased uh, Peter Davison. And um, poor Peter there. <laughs> uh, we were quite fit. And the chap I was with as well, Jerry, he'd just come from South Africa, he'd been from the South African Army. So he was yeah. fit as well. I was still playing charity football and was fairly fit. So we were catching him quite, quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> run, run! <laughs> <laughs> but the amazing story was that uh, in, the, in, the, in the story, uh, is that when we chase him, and then eventually he rolls down yeah. this little sandy ravine, falls to the bottom... We're at the top, and there I raise uh, my ultra modern weapon. <laughs> and um, I think something like, oh, it's all over, Doctor, or say goodnight, Doctor. Yeah. But what we didn't know at the time was they put small explosive charges all around the place, because now yeah. the, the, the whole the scenario is going to go up, the magma creature yeah, yeah, yeah. rises. And we didn't know where they were. Oh. And believe me, one was right between my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so that how the next line wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> it was right, it frightened the life out of me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind the doctor. Round <laughs> park. <laughs> yeah, that bit on the... Uh, you're on um, the top of a cliff or something, that looked quite dangerous to Oh, that's, a, that's, an amazing, that, that, that's an amazing uh, shot, that. Uh, again, Graham... Uh, it's love. That's right. That's our first altercation, Stotts and Krelper, yeah. and uh, he has me over there with, with the knife the blade. Yeah. Yeah. And the way he did, it set it up, half my body was overhanging the cliff. I don't know, about thirty, forty 
drop. I can't remember that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, the things you do, you know, years ago. Oh, uh, not only that, then, he had uh, Morris uh, then right across me, yeah. leaning over as well with the blade there, and then on top of him, leaning across him, was the cameraman. <laughs> it down there. And, uh, of course, it, a bit top-heavy. <laughs> we were all tied up with a huge rope mm. around our midriffs, <laughs> hidden down the bottom there, which was then put back to a Range Rover, which was ignition on, driving. Should we start to go? <laughs> go! <laughs> now, can you imagine if we did go, because they suddenly go, whoop! Uh, you go like the clappers. <laughs> the cartoon yeah. film, then. Yeah. Hey, man, this is a cartoon. <laughs> Uh, no, that was, uh, but well worth a shot, I thought. Yeah. It was a great scene, that. Yeah, that was a really good scene on it, that. Um, it comes across as a, a, the level of that story comes across as more gritty than anything that has gone previously. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think that was good for Peter as well, because uh, he'd got something to battle against. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, the story is out now with, with all the, the, the sort of robots and the robotic stuff and things, and you didn't know who you were, who was what. A mm. uh, good change in that. And... Uh, I believe now, if we're looking back, isn't it? Isn't Nicola? She, is she gone? Is she dying? Is she dead? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's taken. Yeah. And the Sharon's Jack character, lovely Christopher Gable, God bless him. Um, you know, even that evil thing and that had a sensitivity and a loving nature. Yeah. It, was, it was wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it's, and of course, the political intrigue. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody yeah. bumping everybody else up in the local sort of council. It's yeah. like, no, no, it's mine. No, it's not dead. Get out. <laughs> Goodbye, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Be dead by the end. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I was that's say, right. Times haven't changed on that front, have they? Really? That's right. <laughs> so, when you found out there was going to be a lot of location work, how over the moon were you? That you, found out you were going to be in a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> in a quarry yes. down in Dairy Wareham. Seeing as I knew it well, uh, because uh, uh, when my children were small, I used to take them down to the Corfe Castle. And, they, and there's a big teddy bear. I remember a teddy bear scenario. Uh, a teddy bear museum or something down there, which uh, they said, Dad, Dad, let's go yeah. to the teddy bear museum. Uh, but it was wonderful to be there because um, it was all sort of uh, windswept. You know, but every now and again, you came across a little uh, sort of alcove place that sort of buried there and looked over the top and there were all these polystyrene cups with BBC so they just swept them all up they just them all up they say oh it is, who was here last oh that was that no that's right there's various other uh, plays and whatever have been used down there as well it's a great landscape mm-hmm. um, so how yeah. could they have been when it was transmitted in 84 how um, kill kids? Oh, blimey. Um, <laughs> well, one wasn't born, that's why I only had the one. <laughs> uh, that's right, I had the one. Um, yes, my daughter had been one. Right. Oh, two, oh, two, two yeah, one yeah. or two. That's she wouldn't remember it then. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what do they well, think watching it back of you? Oh, they're used they to it now. They, yes, oh, yes, they're used to it now. But the, 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 the big one was uh, another film I did when I was a little boy myself, uh, Whistle Down the Wind. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, yes. I played Jackie Greenwood, eh, the leader of the gang. <laughs> and uh, it was funny watching that with her about three years old on my lap. <laughs> Seeing me as a young little boy yeah. on the screen there. Does it point? Yeah. That's right. Mm, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing to the screen, looking up. Yeah. I'm sure it's probably a baby language that you were much nicer and prettier than <laughs> 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 yeah, no. So I've got to bring up uh, Star Cops. I'm a big fan of Star Cops. And because oh, yeah. you featured in the uh, final episode. That's right. Uh, that, uh, that was... Mm, a strange thing happened in that because it was a lovely character, Daniel Larwood. Larwood. Daniel yeah. Larwood, that's right. Uh, and the origin of the story is that he comes in, uh, he's a great press man, the yeah. uh, Vox Populus. To uncover. And to uncover the Zat, if I remember right. And then, of course, they're a bit dubious about him, the star cops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the first thing they do, he knows one of the guys really well. They mm. grew up together. Yeah. And uh, they, have, they had a relationship, uh, a, you know, a friendship there that... Um, and so uh, the David Holloway character, the, the, yeah. the, 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 was worried about it. And it went on that suddenly he had to sort of reject him. And then the past came up, the thing is there, he got a drunk, a little drunk with him. And they had these scenarios um, where he was, they had a little sort of scrap and that. Um, but then a terrible thing happened. Yeah. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> a terrible thing happened. The guy playing the policeman, I'll be fella, um, 
went down with chicken pox oh, yes. just oh, before uh, recording. Yes. And ergo, uh, they changed the whole scenario and I had to play it then to uh, the Australian woman yeah, of the crew. Yeah. Which, uh, with all due respect there, lost an awful lot in the translation uh, there. Did, I mean, yeah. that's a, but, um, so that was a lack of day, that one. Yeah. Sorry, uh, that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm crinkling my, if you want to know the noise that is, I'm crinkling my twinkle. <laughs> You'll have to go out the shop and buy them. Famously, with that one, there was a lot of behind the scenes problems. Were you at all aware of that as an actor on it? Uh, not really. Um, I, I was busy. Um, because, I mean, when we had to re adjust it to it, uh, I didn't do mind how you work in that. And I remember I. Um, I always say actors who are careful when they get costume again. But I made sure I had this long coat on and a hat, like a sort of hello guys, <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. <laughs> Philip Marlowe character. Yeah. And of course, then he, he improvised the line on. By the way, Mr. Larwood, it, uh, it doesn't rain on the moon. <laughs> yeah. To which I return, not yet. <laughs> uh, but no, that, uh, that that's one of those things that happens. You know, yeah, and, and uh, that's it. Sad. Yeah. Do you find it more difficult working with science fiction genre, which there tends to be a lot of green screen work, more than just regular drama when you've actually got something to act to? Well, uh, the, the, the difference is there. Um, you have to have a good imagination, of course. Uh, I, two or three things like that. Um, one is that a film called Land That Time Forgot. Oh. Uh, whereupon I was um, the first uh, sailor to be devoured by the prehistoric monster. And they tried that various ways, and, and one way of doing it uh, was with a, a silk screen, which apparently then I couldn't see the monster, because it's been shown up, but on the, on the submarine they built in the tank, uh, I was just given a cue to turn, look, move there, react, <laughs> and fall backwards, which... Per quoi? I mean, there's no reason yeah, that. Yeah. But on the because on the silk screen, the way that they yeah. shot that together, mm. it worked all right. Um, but I always used to think that, yeah, and of course, I did the Ace of Wands, which again had uh, special effects and, and things in that. And um, uh, I was doing Ali Bongo, and that, uh, the magic. There. But that was a nice character because I was always the practical one and disbelieve. Oh, don't yeah. be silly! Don't be silly! That guy. And of course, always getting into the trouble. Yeah. That's why he was the fall guy. Um, and then, of course, working with Ronnie Corbett, yeah, you always remember that uh, uh, with Ronnie, you never know what he's going to do on the take. You know, he's suddenly got his glasses or that, and you don't run over a laugh line. And so you lend it, particularly if you pre-recorded any stuff, that's before the, before the audience were in. Um, I always used to make sure after every time he said anything, I'd go one, two thousand, two, two thousand, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we'd always edit out if nothing there. But I know that once they're in the, in the audience, there they would laugh, yeah. and Ronnie would be there to uh, put yeah. the laugh in, obviously. Yeah. So you, you, that's right, you, yeah. you, you, you have to judge it then, yeah. small judgment. Yeah. But a man of many years, <laughs> <laughs> I found it. <laughs> so it must be very different over the years in doing TV films, in the uh, theatre work. How has it changed in modern day compared to how it used to be back? Oh, uh, no, well, back uh, people mumble more now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. probably gather. It's gone for TV, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, I mean, the, 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 the work itself, um, you know, theatre, you've got a... Well, I, my theatre days were way back in the 60s when I was oh, a young really? lad. Yeah. Uh, at the old Vic, oh my dear boy, the National <laughs> Theatre, when uh, Lord God Almighty, and I mean that joyful, um, uh, Lawrence Olivier, uh, uh, Sir Lawrence, was uh, the, the artistic director, and of course with the clipped D's and T's and all that, you know, he was a great man for the speech, yeah. and uh, one had to have a voice then that would carry and hit the oh, back yes. of the stalls. And you can see it now um, in people like Anthony Hopkins, uh, Derek Jacobi, Ian McKellen. Yeah. They were all uh, new boys as well. Um, yeah, older than me, age. of course. <laughs> uh, but um, you can hear now in their delivery, you know, and certainly, and, you know, with Gandalf, every word that you can hear yeah. is there. Um, even Anthony Hopkins, you know, that, that rolled eye on the lips, that <laughs> straight from Olivia, from those days, uh, the national. So that's the bigger um, 
films, of course, they, they govern, they, they have a sound man and they have a yeah. microphone, you know, and uh, yeah. so hopefully they're yeah. at, but um, television, the one, I don't know whether you, I find, perhaps I'm getting on a bit, going deaf, you'll have to say, God, what did he say? Yeah. What did he say? Yeah. He say? Didn't hear that, didn't hear Music that. Music too loud. I do, yeah. find, I do find that. Um, I'm not quite getting the lines. And of course, the basic, to do with age. No, no, no. <laughs> the basic premise is that somebody's written it and somebody wants to understand what's been written, yeah, so you've yeah. got to make it clear. Yes, um, yes, yes. Sorry, then. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? It's all right, Sam. Would you like to come on to the New Who, appear on the New Who? And if you did, you've already played one kind of character that's quite uh, militaristically aggressive. Would you like to actually come where you wouldn't be seen, playing like one of the monsters or something like that? Well, uh, I'm, I'm cheap, talented, and no one's available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, sorry, that laugh is <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, uh, the work is work. I mean, mm. uh, anything uh, that. The, the great thing about a monster, I suppose, if, you, if you're masked up. Um, it would be set. It'd be how could you change the emotions that you might get from that? And certainly, would love to do the physicality. Mm. That's uh, that's and have something that move there, that hunch, that hunch backwards, and that you, that's used. And that would be interesting how to play to get emotions from a almost a static mm. uh, face. And, 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 I mean, interesting. I should have shown Jack had to, yeah, clearly, yeah, yeah. in the uh, design. Yeah. Yeah. You get a voice. You yeah. have a voice. Oh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doctor. <laughs> most, uh, this is a standard question, and most of the answers are, they sort of fell into it, but how did you begin acting? Was it a drive force, or did you fall into acting? To begin at the beginning. Yes. Such a typical text. Well, at the beginning of the minute, I won one of these... Um, Auditions, because um, I come from Birmingham, and um, a, a writer called David Turner had uh, written a play that has been done by the BBC, with a pawn, set in Birmingham, with a pawn the part of a, a sort of eleven-year-old boy, uh, was uh, the son of uh, the, the father played by Robert Shaw, Robert Shaw, and uh, at that time the Birmingham accent was virtually unheard yeah. of, well before Crossroads. There weren't many Birmingham accents in such a I wonder why you are calm, but you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, they, but they wanted somebody over, over 14 who could still play 11 or 12. So they went around the local schools for the, the accent. And 150, 20, 10. And then we all, there were about six of us, did a little audition at Costa Green Studios in Birmingham. And... Um, I got the job. And from that, uh, I'd always liked drama at school, uh, but then when I we went to the senior school, so the, the academic took over. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not you, I'm putting it's it where it's best balance. Fiddly. Fiddly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, so it was nice again. But uh, Richard Attenborough uh, saw the play. It was live, unfortunately, and not recorded, so it's gone forever. Um, and was casting a film, Whistle Down the Wind. And I went to see him then, uh, supposedly for the, 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 the very young boy, but obviously he's too old for that, and so he cast me as Jackie Greenwood yeah, yeah. in that. Uh, and while I was doing that, uh, the, the things came up then, there was Zed Cars, there was Dixon and Doc Green, there was, there was loads of television programmes. And... and um, so that was really nice, and the, the fortunate thing was, see, right up until I was twenty-one, I'm just opening a bottle and I drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> I could still play fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was, it was, you know, lots of lovely stuff to do, uh, and so into that. And then, as I said, my first theatre job um, was straight into the the old Vic, yeah. and thereupon that's where. Because I still had a bit of a Birmingham accent, you know, so the deal. And um, I had these lines to play to Robert Stevens in uh, The Royal Hunt of the Sun, where he said, you know, I've got these cards. And he said, what cards are these? And he said, oh, my Lord, the cards there. He said, what's this? And he said, well, this is the bishop. And, and, and what's this one? I said, these are the poor. <laughs> and he had to say, what is the poor? <laughs> 
angry because you had to repeat whatever I said. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was on that note where the Lord God Master, uh, Olivier, of course, said, Roy, my dear boy, you really must lose your Birmingham accent. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I got out a tape recorder. How now, Brown? How do you make much money? None of that. Yeah. Do you? And um, I go, why? I forgot what I was talking about now. <laughs> What's the reason? How did I start? That's all. And so that's and that was it then. Yes, yeah. so I was on the Wicked Road. And at the, uh, the old Vic there, the National, uh, they met wonderful people there, great directors and writers. One in particular, Franco Zeffirelli, with whom then uh, off we went to Italy to do Taming of the Shrew and Romeo and Juliet, mm. and that, that side, uh, which was lovely. And the rest they see is. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, yeah. that's, hey, that's, that's, that'd be a good song. You're out of time. I'll say, baby, baby. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, have you woken up now? Thank you very much. That's good. Yes, I'll, I'll take cash, I'm not proud. <laughs> You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Talos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.